All right. I, I believe we're live now. Hello and welcome to our business agility video podcast. So each week we spend 30 minutes exploring uh, business topics for growing businesses in Canada. Of course, we can't start our topic today without acknowledging what's most important in Canada today, which is that hockey season is starting. So this is great. We're still going to do the business agility co- podcast because that's as exciting for us as hockey is for most Canadians. Um, today, our topic is we're going to explore evaluating ERP solutions for distributors and manufacturers. Uh, An an enterprise resource planning or ERP system to run your distribution or manufacturing business is a critical part of your business. And so it's a very important decision that will affect your company for many years. So this is particularly important in today's business environment with rapidly changing business challenges. And what we're wanting to do all the time through our agility sessions and particularly with ERP software is how we can best position your business, not just to survive, but to thrive in this period, but also to facilitate sustained growth in your business. So our panelists today are Samantha DeForge and myself, Murray Quibel. As always, our format is interactive. So you have, if you've joined us on the Zoom webinar, use the chat box, ask us some questions, send us your comments. If you've joined us on the Facebook live stream, use the comments in there and we'll get to any questions and comments as best as we can. So as far as the agenda goes, we'll start with panelist introductions and then get right into our topic. So with that, I'll introduce myself quickly. I am Marie Quibel. I'm the president of Accurate Solutions. Now we are a cloud ERP software solutions provider. And so evaluating ERP software and kind of the technologies and the products that have existed over the years is something that really I've done my whole career. So it's something we think about every day and it's led us to look at different solutions over time, you know, way back to the DOS days, to the Windows days, and now we're into a full web-based uh, environment. So we're starting to lose even the connotation of cloud. It's just the way that technology gets deployed these days. And so we're going to go through a few of the key considerations. And of course, it's not all about technology. And uh, so that's kind of, we're going to go through all the different categories and we'll focus on all the aspects of the you know, evaluation. So we'll get into that. There's five categories, or actually six, that we're going to get into. But uh, before we do that, I'll turn it over to Sam for a quick introduction, and then we will get right into our topic. Yeah, so my name is Samantha Nain DeForge. I work with Acuris, and yeah, or, I mean, on a day-to-day basis, we, we con- consistently see businesses exploring options to expand their businesses, and there's a lot of different ways that, you know, exploring an ERP, particularly for a distribution or a manufacturing company, there's a lot of steps and processes that not only have to happen before you reach out to a vendor, um, but really about how do you quantify your costs of ownership of your existing systems? How do you know what you need? How do you know if you're being sold something that looks so great, but it actually works in a completely different way? And how do you avoid those risks that tend to happen in an evaluation process? And how do you really define what you need without getting either too much or too little as far as your business solution goes? Yeah, thanks, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> bit of feedback there. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to share my screen right now. And uh, and I'll show you why we're going to do that in a second. Here. So just give me a second. I'm going to share my screen. And when we do that, uh, what uh, I what should pop up is here. Uh, you got my screen there. Is that we're going to yeah. take you through two different checklists. Well, sorry, we're not going to take you through them. But we're just going to feature some pieces of them. And so right now, I'm showing a distribution management system evaluation checklist. Uh, The other tab here, which I'm going to show you is a lot of similar topics, but it's a manufacturing system evaluation checklist. So those are the two kind of industries or set of business requirements that we're going to explore today. But what I want to highlight on both of these, they're both structured in a similar fashion, is there are five areas of function of uh, business requirements and key considerations that you need to consider. And I think they, they both, these checklists do a good job of kind of walking through each of them. So the areas are, as you can kind of see, I don't know if I, I'm going to highlight this, productivity, mm-hmm. functionality, technology, value, and risk. And then at the end of this, we're going to highlight the, the sixth one, which isn't on the checklist. But the sixth one is really, well, what the heck are we going to do next? And where do I start and how to do this? So what, what a, <clears throat> the checklist here, so the productivity is really, you know, what can the product do to make your, you and your staff more production? And that's really... Those are always the type of questions that we should ask. It's always what should drive really any kind of a business decision 
around a new piece of technology or a new set of business processes. So, you know, we want this stuff should make your life easier. It should help your company make more money. But of course, being in, the, in reduced cost, but, but productivity should be a key measure of that. Uh, functionality, of course, it, you can't select anything like this until you actually make sure that you have a tool that's going to actually serve the guts of your business requirements. And I think you always have to kind of kind of evaluate what's our, what are essential or specific requirements versus nice to have. And I'm going to, we're going to get into a few of these, but these are the five areas, you know, technology, value, and risk. So we're going to kind of explore points in each of them. And so anyway, that's kind of what we want to do. I'm going to show as I scroll, we're not going to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here because we actually want to debate these topics and you, I want you to see our, our faces as we go through them and we're going to go through each you know kind of a topic area i'm not going to walk through the, the checklist other than i do want to highlight a few things here for example on the functionality side and, what, and the reason is a lot of times people will say just show me a demo so if they're thinking about going through a, a evaluation they want to say i just want to see a software demo and usually that's the last place you to start but there's a valid reason for why people do that. And the valid reason is this, is that let's say if you're running your business on a entry level product or on spreadsheets or a custom design solution or something that's been around since the eighties, really, you may not know what's out there. You don't know what you don't know. And so a lot of times people just say, man, I have no idea. I don't know that we can use automated warehouse management or I don't know that robotics are actually a thing out there that people are using and such. So they may say, I have no idea what's out there. Just show, you, show, you, show me what you got, and then we'll decide if it's important. So I get why people do that kind of thing. But what I would suggest you do is, when you first, if you look at a, 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 a checklist like this, then you can start to see, well, these are the kinds of things you should be able to do with sales order management or purchase order management. Or if we flip into you know, warehouse management and fulfillment, you know, do we need to do these things or not? Uh, things like inventory management, do we need lot and serial number tracking? Again, the intent, I'm not going to highlight all these things here, but a little checklist like this can start to frame what your business requirements are. And if I flip into manufacturing, again, same kinds of things is as we look at the functionality area, then you get into material requirements planning. Uh, that's not for everybody. So, you know, you don't need to, you know, if you don't need it, you really don't need to kind of adopt a product that just does a beautiful job of that, that might cost in the millions of dollars. You don't need to do that if, you really, if that's not what you need to do. So again, the point being is that um, these are tools, they are checklists. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop my sharing my screen and then Sam and I are gonna start to go through each of those areas and start to throw out a few topics which we think are most relevant here. So I'm gonna stop share and then I'll throw it over to Sam. And uh, so we'll start with the productivity. So we'll go into those four five areas. So productivity, you know, functionality, and uh, the other three, which Technology, are- Technology, value, and risk. <laughs> yes. So we'll start with productivity. So I'll stop share, and then I'll throw it back to Sam, and I'll throw some ideas out around productivity. Well, I think when, it ta when we talk about productivity, I mean, as a business, I think that could be such a vague term. I think it's very ambiguous um, when we're talking about, you know, what do we need in a business solution? You know, is it going to make my people more productive? Is my business going to be more productive? And I think the answer is that, you know, it does both. Um, and, you know, I think we have to always think about when we're talking about productivity, well, why is this business solution going to make my business more productive and the reason is is it gets rid of all the all the fluff all the things you don't need you know but it's not just an audit trail and that's i think what we really have to keep in mind is these systems are designed nowadays to make you money back in the day you know quickbooks or you know older erp solutions you know that were hardwired installed in a company's building and just you know, there to just make sure that you had an audit trail of your business. That was sort of the foundation of how all of this started. But now these systems have become so automated that they do make your business more productive because you're asking a system to do something for you that you now don't have to hire somebody else to do. And I think, I think what, that's probably one of the biggest things I would emphasize around, you know, how this not only makes your people more productive, but your business too. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, obviously, when we think about productivity, it 
you know, like you mentioned, it's not just about the people, it's about the business. And of course, uh, the bit, the people are usually, you know, the kind of, that's who actually, you know, that's how things get done. Someone takes an order, someone uh, maybe uh, enters a sales order and ships the goods. But I think that the key point of that is that if you, you obviously we have to focus on how people can be efficient, but in a lot of cases, the system can actually automate a lot of that. So what we often rely on people to do, you know, instead of rekeying, uh, once a sales order has been shipped, instead of rekeying that into the accounts receivable system or into the, you know, all of a sudden it automatically goes there. And that's some of the, that's just a fundamental thing that the system can actually automate what might typically be done by a person. That data entry, yeah, that data entry is so dangerous in so regards. Not only is it typically managed in Excel sheet, Excel sheets, which are really susceptible to not only becoming corrupted over time, especially if there's some hard formulas in them and there are multiple people accessing them, the time it takes for someone to enter this information, the fact that you're probably going to have really high employee, uh, employee turnover because that is a really, really crappy job to do, you know, manipulating Excel sheets day in and day out. And then you also face the risk of errors, right? You miss a zero. You now have issues because, you know, you're getting different reporting across the board. You're not capturing data once. You're capturing it in six or seven different places as yeah. it goes through your business line, right? Business I line. Think, and obviously there's a productivity there. There's a risk of error. Um, if I take that another step further, I might say, like, I think we can actually, if we think about things like a customer portal or a self-service, you know, an e-commerce website, I, so not only can that increase productivity, I think it can increase, well, it's not me that says this, the, the stats are out there that that, that will help you drive more sales because the, there's consumers as we start to purchase, not start to, we do this all the time, we purchase goods online. So if your business is set up with an e-commerce site or a customer portal, not only is that more efficient, it actually will help you sell more, It'll help your customers engage with you in the manner that you need. And all that, from our, our aspect, that's an area of productivity that kind of ties into the fact that, you know, it, you know, setting up an integrated e-commerce site or a customer portal that's just part of the native functionality. It looks into the customers that are already set up in there, but it's just another way to interact with the system. Uh, well, and if you, you also take a look at it too. It's like self-checkouts, right? The grocery stores. If you have to quickly run in and grab one thing, you don't have to sit there and wait behind someone who's got an entire cart of materials or groceries that they're buying and then wait to check out. Or now with the ability to order groceries online, right? Same thing. Now we've created jobs for people to actually go and pick groceries for individuals so that people have that ability. Yeah, exactly. You walk around with the, little handhelds all the time. One, one thing I'll, I'll kind of <clears> maybe <throat> feature in the product area is is uh, I mean, then we'll get into the more specific functionality, but but I, I like to think about what about workflow automation, and uh, and that could include approvals or automated business processes, and that could be an automatic email that gets sent. So as soon as the order is shipped, automatic automatic email gets sent to the customer, and and so on. But those are just little workflow things that not only help you be more efficient but actually helps increase your customer experience. So those mm -hmm. are things that I like to think about. So it's not just productivity, it's, it's kind of how can we help engagement of not just your users, but your, um, your customer. Yeah, we go to the, customer experience. Yeah, let's go to the next category. We got, we've still got you know, five of these to go through and then we wanna get to the kind of key one as to what you do next. The, the next one is functionality. And this is obviously, functionality is, is core. And that, you know, when you, when you evaluate systems you know functionality always ranks number one in terms of you have and it's kind of the not the the most uh exciting piece a lot of it is just guts of what you need to do <clears throat> basic functions uh some can be a little bit more advanced but functionality at its core is really what you need to run your business but but what are some areas you might want to highlight on the functionality sam you know, I think functionality obviously is the core of any business, right? And understanding what you need as a business is, is where you have to start, right? Gathering some requirements and really understanding, okay, I need purchasing, I need sales. And then asking yourself, 
why you need all of that. Who's going to be involved? What role is this going to play in my business? Um, and really getting into a really granular, granular level, right? So oftentimes when we work with, with companies on whether it's an RFP, which are, are typically really dreadful processes because we don't have enough information. We just said we need sales order management. Okay, but when we're talking about sales order management, do you want approvals on your sales orders? Do you want to track specific discounts for your customers? Do you want anything automated? Do you want it to automatically email it out when it, when it gets sent? And I get it, some people don't know what the capabilities are of softwares and we can most certainly go into details like that, but it's that transparency and communication that you really need to have with a vendor when you're exploring them and they're gonna ask questions and they're gonna ask really deep questions about your business. And it's not because they're gonna go and open up a business and compete against you. It's simply because the more information you provide as far as you know how your company operates, what helps us better understand what kind of functionality you're looking for at which point we can suggest really you know high levels of functionality medium or we can get really specific and really detailed and really help automate some workflows and things like that kind of comes back to the productivity standpoint right but functionality warehouse management that's what you just mentioned right when we talk about warehouse management you know okay i want the ability to scan inventory when i'm doing physical inventory counts when i'm shipping it when i'm receiving it when i'm receiving inventory in transferring it out, things like that. I want that functionality. Okay, fine. In many softwares, that is, for instance, an add-on, right? That's another question you need to ask. Is this going to be an add-on program? Is it a third-party program? Or is this something that the system does standard as standard functionality within its core, right? Because as soon as you start leveraging things like add-on solutions, not to say that they're bad, they're but they can be really bad depending on the product you buy, right? A lot of some products are a little bit older and they tend to pose a risk. But I think, you know, ensuring that things are standard functionality would be very important for me anyway, as a business owner. Yeah, and I think it's, again, again, it's a mix of that core functionality. You know, what do you absolutely need to do now? Uh, you mentioned, you know, warehouse management and barcoding scanning. You know, you can run a whole warehouse without that, really. You know, so you, you know, some people will say that's a nice to have. But what if that increases your throughput? And, and what if that increases, you know, instead of a truck sitting on your dock for, uh, you know, an hour and a half, what if you can turn that around in, in 30 minutes? And then, and then all of a sudden word gets out. We know one of our customers is, has a, a huge reputation for getting trucks in and out of their warehouse quickly. And that's why companies buy from them. That's why they continue to, to use their services. And the, again, if you can use, you know, it doesn't, it's not all about technology, of course. I mean, a lot of that is the, their success in the example I mentioned is their people. They've just, they know the business. They've been doing it for a long time, but if they can even improve. So let's say if their average turnaround is, is 30 minutes, if they can move that to 28 minutes or 25 minutes, if you know what I mean, then using technology to your advantage, it can help, you know, help increase customer satisfaction, throughput and efficiency all over the place. And I think that's it, you know, so evaluate not just the critical core pieces, but then also the nice to haves, whether it's something you're currently using now at, or some, something that, that you think that is something that can help you, you know, down the road. Uh, yeah, some other you also want to make sure that in five years, you're still going to be able to run the same software, right? Because then you don't want to have to re-implement in five years again or three years because your business has grown and it doesn't have the functionality. No, yeah, that, I think say. that's, yeah, that's important, particularly for manufacturers is that uh, the, the one thing that we know changes is, and of course, in this rapid, you know, kind of changing environment we're at is that you know, your business today could be a lot different than it is in a year's time or a few years or, or let's say if you manufacture and sell one product and you see an opportunity for something a little bit different, then you want to be able to have, make sure that your system is able to support that. So really in the manufacturing world, that's uh, kind of mixed mixed mode manufacturing. So make to order or engineer to order or make to stock or make to project, things like that. Again, you may not be using it now and it's not something you absolutely have to implement now, but what if down the road, you do start to get into more make to order type products and, and you know, make sure, sure that you have the system that's able to support that if and when you need to do it. But uh, any other areas of functionality you want to highlight, Sam? Because I'm, I'm going to come back again on stuff because this, it really is the kind of the most important area for people to focus on. But any other things you want to point out? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. A business is going to know what they need and the way that they get there is by documenting their business requirements. 
Yes. So if absolutely. you do that, you're, you've just made your life a whole lot easier. Yeah. Because some people don't do it. Makes you know the discovery processes on our side's a little bit more time consuming. It can take a little bit of effort to get that digging done. But you're gonna have to do it anyways when it comes to implementing anything. So might as well just get it done now, right? <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Because I think that even this checklist that, that I featured earlier and that, you know, that we're kind of alluding to now is that really it is, it's just a list of features. And, and again, what's most important, you absolutely have to do yourself is, is identify which is most important mm -hmm. to you. So it's your features and break it down by, you know, by areas, by, by finance, by uh, project costing, if you do that or by manufacturing or, you know, the quote to, to order those kinds of things. So break it down by business process, but make sure you document the key requirements that you have and make sure that that's what you're evaluating any solution against. But that's, that's a good point. Well, yeah. let's segue um, into technology. This is where the RAF is going to come out. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, technology, right? RAF. No, the RAF. Um, <laughs> technology um, and how the word cloud is so abused in today's market. Um, cloud can mean anything from a hosted server in you know, somebody's basement to sitting in a data center or you know, in private cloud subscriptions or you know, public cloud. And there's so many different variations of cloud and understanding the difference and really knowing what types of cloud are available. And private cloud, you know, a lot of people are being hosted in um, Amazon Web uh, Services now data centers or Microsoft Azure. Um, and it is definitely a security thing. It's a much, much safer than having a server in your building, for instance, because someone can easily compromise an IP address based on location. But that doesn't go to say that being in a private cloud data center is still that secure. Um, you know, unfortunately, in, in the past, prior to my career with Acumatica, I have experienced and have seen people sitting in data centers and still getting hit and compromised by ransomware. Um, so there is a huge, you know, risk when it comes to security. But then there's the other concept of what is true cloud, because we've all known cloud for the last five years, but what is this true cloud? And what Acumatica has done is they've differentiated themselves from the private cloud subscription, uh, subscriber sort of me mentality and said, we are a true cloud software. We are programmed in HTML5. We are web-based from the ground up. We don't have software installations. Everything exists in the web. You don't need to VPN. You don't need to remote desktop into anything. And I think that's probably how I would explain it. And I think it's really important for people to understand that there is a difference between true cloud and private cloud, and that there is a huge value add on being in a web-based and true cloud environment. So if I, if I ask you, so, so what, what is cloud, you know, so, so what, you just talked, you know, techie stuff, you know, as a business owner, uh, you know, tell me why true cloud is important to me. It, to me, whew, you really want to bring it out, don't you? <laughs> um, I think true cloud is really important for a variety of reasons. One of them being security, um, security, um, the ability to not be subject to a lot of, you know, data breaches, you know, never say never, but we as a, you know, Acumatica partner or vendor, we've never been hit by ransomware. You know, a lot of software companies can't say that. So I definitely say security, um, accessibility, you can access it from any browser, your mobile phone seamlessly, you don't have to hard install, you know, these applications that are VPNing through something just so you have access to a mobile app, all you need is an internet connection. If your yeah, computer yeah. gets hit by a truck, you can go to the library or just go buy another one and be back working. Yeah, I, I like, yeah, I, and I like those. And I think that a lot of companies and people will, will, you know, you obviously, when you're talking to a vendor, they'll, they'll, you know, kind of tout their, the, the virtues of their own system and they'll, they'll tend to gloss over some of the things. But I, I like the way you've described that, Sam, is it? So the security aspect, the fact that it's, the software has been designed to be used natively over the web uh there's both a security so it, basically the security is baked into that uh, things like secure uh encrypted transactions the the way it performs so the performance around that again what happens is if you haven't re-engineered your your product completely all of a sudden there's latency there's breaches here and there and you're not really sure where those might be and so that's a key thing for sure and that's what we've seen is that making sure that if it's developed from the ground up it's already been designed for that so not only is it more secure and performs better but it's also positioned for the, you know kind of the next release and we know that you know technology never stops so there's another release of 
of Chrome or or uh, Edge or whatever browsers is you're using. And and again, a lot of products are scrambled like crazy to try to support some of that stuff just because they've not been natively kind of designed around that. Um, some of the other Anything other uh, kind of technology related topics and we'll kind of have to move on to a couple. I can talk about that for four hours. So let's, let's just move on. <laughs> well, I think one thing I want to feature is that when we talk about cloud, I think one of the perceptions might be that, hey, if it's a, in a cloud or any kind of a multi-tenant environment, you, you know, you can't customize it or you can't tweak it for your business. And again, that's that's a little bit of a throwback to some older technologies again the modern technologies you absolutely can and that's kind of where where we're at where with with our solutions for our customers you know particularly Acumatica, is that you got to make sure that you can do that and not so you can kind of get the best of all worlds and that's where i like to settle on that but uh, okay well we'll move on geez we only got five minutes left and we still have to wrap up here mm -hmm. but we'll move on to the next area so value talk about that sam Oh man, these systems bring a lot of value. It comes back to the point I made, you know, earlier on in, in today's session where these systems are designed to make you money. They're not just an audit trail. And if you look at it that, you know, I don't have enough money right now because I'm running eight different programs in my business. I've got, you know, let's say between 30 to 60 people doing data entry or even we're talking to a smaller company, right? I've got five people in data entry. I'm running six different programs. Um, I don't have the capital. I don't have the money to actually spend right now on investing in a solution. This is the really, really bad mentality to have on that in my perspective. These systems can do some powerful things. Um, you know, day to day, we, we work with our implementation team. We see our consultants doing absolutely amazing things day in and day out and just really pushing these systems to their limits and really optimizing our companies, our customers. You know, when COVID hit, translating uh, uh, retail foot traffic into just commerce sales. Right. One of our customers went 450 percent up in sales right when COVID hit and the whole shutdown happened. Right. So they literally just seamlessly just said, OK, we're going to shut our doors and boom, because they had a commerce site, all of their foot traffic migrated to online and it had zero impact on, on you know, business operations. Yeah, I, I think. There's value in that. Yeah, I think so. Too. For me, I'm going to throw two thoughts out there. First of all, is the. Uh, the ability to scale and grow and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, make sure that you're supporting the future business. So that's something you don't want to underestimate that. So we've seen it in the case where some people realize, oh man, maybe I, I can't afford this. Uh, so they buy a cheaper solution and then next thing you know, they're talking to us in a year's time and realizing, yeah, you know, we should have done that. So things like that, you know, think about your growth. Think about, let's not, you know, kind of limit what you're trying to do. Let's help you facilitate that growth. But then the other thing I want to focus on also is, is the total cost of ownership. I think a lot of people get kind of bogged down if they look and say that might be expensive, but if they sat back and really made an apples to apples comparison around the costs of servers and upgrading hardware and the staff that might be that you might need on hand or on site or on premise for your to support that IT or outsource, or outsource then you know then that all of a sudden if you put all the costs together, some kind of a subscription model that's fully managed is and all web-based all of a sudden becomes compelling so the last component is risk and then we'll wrap up quickly maybe just a quick thought about risk sam i think risk yeah you know we mentioned a few different types of risk risk when it comes to the people who are involved in the process for sure are you facing biased opinions um are you exploring private cloud are you exploring on-premise solutions um you know google ransomware attacks it happens and it happens quite frequently um, and the risk of, you know, yeah, like Murray just mentioned too, do you have to re-implement in a few years? Sure, you might buy the system that might be $5,000 cheaper a year, but sure enough, in two years time, we're going to be having a conversation again and you had just spent $70,000, $50,000 in an implementation and you're going to have to spend that money all over again to re-implement into something bigger. Um, usually understanding the product lines really helps with that. You know, is there a bigger product version of what you're trying to sell me? Right, because if someone's working with a company and they say, "Yeah, this is what we're pitching," you have to say, "Okay, can I run this if I grow to a level of 10,000 employees?" Maybe that won't happen right off the hop, and who knows? Fingers crossed. Hopefully, it does happen for you pretty quick. But if the answer is no, that means that there is a point where you will have to re-implement into something larger. The point I'll make on risk here, and uh, holy man, we got to wrap up in a minute here, is what's what's the risk of not doing anything, or more specifically, what's the risk? 
of you continuing to run your business on spreadsheets. So there's a data risk, there's a consistency risk, and there's a risk of data loss. And so that's a lot of times or a risk of reliance on any one person. And if that's what happens, if you rely on manual or kind of ad hoc processes. And, and again, that might kind of be where I sum up it to say, what do we do next? Well, look at your key requirements of your business, look for spreadsheets in your, in your business. And for goodness sake, if you are gonna evaluate this stuff, start with documenting your business requirements first, uh, maybe use some checklists like this to help you understand what's out there. But the last thing you should do is just start ran randomly running around looking for demos. Make sure you understand your business requirements first. I'll turn that over to Sam to wrap up on the last point. <laughs> and thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Call me and ask me for a demo without me knowing anything about your business. You're not getting one, so call somebody else. Um, but for for my wrap up thoughts is, you know, yeah, definitely document your business requirements. Start there and really try to leverage a trusted advisor without an unbiased opinion. Um, and just to wrap up, we are having a lunch and learn on this. Um, I think next week, Murray. So if you want to join us for a lunch, register for it. I will share the link on LinkedIn. It's available on our website. Uh, if you're in Canada, you will receive a, I think it's $30, uh, skip the dishes voucher to order yourself some lunch, join us. And we're, we're really going to get more granular sort of on this topic and really focus on maybe some more product specific things related to Acumatica. So if you know anyone who might be looking or might be a perfect candidate to look at something like this, tell them, hey, have a free lunch, come listen, it might be worth your while. So that's my wrap up thought. But thanks everyone for joining us today. And we'll see you next week. Thanks.